Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today Oculus announced a new version of the Rift. Coming in spring of 2019, it is the Oculus Rift S. And since I was working on the uh, Unreal Engine stuff, I didn't really get to pay a lot of attention to this now, so that means there's been a few hours since this announcement, and there has been some uh, feedback of what the community thinks, and we could just call it a mixed response. So right now you see their trailer playing in the background, their launch trailer, and it's nothing but good news, obviously. This is marketing speak at this point in time, and there's a lot in this release to be excited about. There's new sensors in there. It's got room scale out of the box. Um, it's got a simplified number of wires or connections going on it. Um, just generally across the board, it is a slightly simpler device. It's It fits a bit better. Um, you can wear it for longer. It, oddly enough, they work with Lenovo on designing the ergonomics on this one, but this is designed to be a more comfortable version of the Oculus Rift built on the um, the lessons learned from the Quest and other devices, and it is kind of essentially the next generation of the Rift, and that's the important thing to realize here. This is not Oculus Rift 2. This is a, a, a developmental iteration of the Oculus Rift. I think you will no longer be able to get the Oculus Rift and this will be its replacement. So that means it is now actually using inside out instead of base stations for actually positioning you in the world. And that is going to make things simpler but is it going to work as well? That is the big question mark. And now that we've gone through their trailer, let's look at their site for a little bit more detail. So now we're checking out the Oculus Rift blog for some details on the new Rift. And you see here they say, GDC, we unle unleashed the Oculus Rift S today, a new VR headset that combines the convenience of uh, built-in Oculus Insight tracking technology with the full power of your PC. Built on the Rift platform, Rift S gives gamers and tech enthusiasts access to the most immersive content VR has to offer and is launching in spring of 2019 for 399 USD. So basically they've taken the Quest technology for room tracking and they're building it into the Rift. And what this has done is gotten rid of the tracking stations in your room. You don't need to set those up, but the question, oh, you also get room scale tracking out of the box, but is the tracking as good? Well, I guess we'll have to find that one out in time. Now, the Rift S works with the Rift platform, giving you access to top selling and most immersive VR titles day one. Even more groundbreaking games like Asgard's Wrath, Defector, Stormroll, blah, blah, blah. Uh, games on the Rift have never looked better. Increased comfort and integrated audio. So they worked with Lenovo, as I mentioned earlier on, which is a little strange. Um, but they say that they've basically improved the comfort, better weight distribution, improved light blocking, as well as a simple single cable system for clutter-free clutter -free experiences. Now, I know a lot of people want to see wireless, but you're not going to see wireless at that 399 track point. It'd be interesting to see if the next version, the, the Rift 2, actually goes full wireless because the, the tether is definitely an annoying aspect of VR in general. Uh, the Rift S also features the same integrated audio system as the Oculus Quest and the Oculus Go with a headphone jack that lets you use your own favorite headphones if you prefer. Um, Oculus Insight for precise room scale tracking, as I mentioned earlier, it uses inside out tracking technology via camera, so you no longer need to set up the stations, the sensors around the room for it to work. Uh, Oculus Touch controllers redesigned for inside out tracking bring familiar hand presences and input so you can grab point and gesture through the best of VR. Now what they say is this handles um, out of range of vision tracking of your controllers better, so that shouldn't be an issue. This is something that mixed reality, like the Microsoft devices, they, I love inside out tracking to be honest it's a lot easier faster to get up and working but when you're playing something like pool and it goes out of the range your, your back shot with your cue your hand goes spinning off into space this is supposed to solve that they've also have inside uh, have, sorry pass through plus we're enabling a true stereo correct pass through feature pass through plus it utilizes core Oculus runtime advancements, including ASW, to produce a comfortable experience with minimal depth disparity or performance impact. It is especially helpful anytime you need to step or see outside of your play space. And this is a shared platform. So ultimately, Rift and Rift S are the same core platform. Rift owners will keep getting software upgrades. Obviously, they won't get the, the same exact features because they don't have the same hardware anymore. Um, but the same games for today and coming in the future will run on both platforms platforms. So like I said, the Rift S is essentially the Rift now. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Rift be completely pulled from shelves. And I got a feeling part of that is because the Rift S is cheaper. 
And I think that a lot of what we saw going on here is to actually make it cheaper to run. So this graphic kind of illustrates some of the difference between the before, the existing Rift, and the new Rift S. And this is where some of the points of contention, and people are looking at this as a downgrade as opposed to an upgrade or a side grade, is before and after, same basic price, but you're looking before, you used to have dual OLED panels for your, um, your visibility. Now you have a single LCD panel. Now the total pixel count is up on the one axis, but down on the other. So you went from basically effectively uh, 2080, or I guess the width would stay the same, but anyways, it was 1080 by 1200 per eye, dual OLED. Now it's 12, um, 2560 by 1440 shared between both eyes. So you got 40% more pixels, but less fidelity per eye essentially. And then on top of that, they dropped from 90 Hertz to 80 hertz. And there's a lot of people that say that 90 hertz was that magic barrier that kept people from getting motion sick. Now the original DK devices, the, the developer kits, were at 70 hertz or, yeah, I think it was 70 hertz back then. And some people report that there's no difference, it doesn't make any changes. Other people say I it's Harf City. So it'd be interesting to see if that downgrade of 10 hertz refresh rate is going to make a big profound effect. But that's where people are definitely a little wary about this change. And that is a straight cost cutting measure, but they say they also did it to basically um, keep the performance requirement of the machines driving VR down. So you don't have to push more pixels to make things work. Don't know if I personally buy that excuse, but this is the, the area where people are definitely the most contentious between the two versions. On top of that, you went from having the sensors, the, the multiples, um, sensors in your room for Mac tracking motion to an inside out tracking system. Is it better? Well, it's definitely cheaper, but is it better? Time will tell. And then finally, and then this is just an across the board upgrade, because they went to the inside out tracking, you do get room scale out of the box without requiring any additional device setup or um, sensors in your room like you did with the existing Rift. So it's interesting to see exactly where this one ends. Uh, this is the new Oculus Rift S. In some ways, it's, it's just kind of a, a generational upgrade. Personally, I actually like inside out tracking. I don't like having all this clutter and crap around my room. It's why I went with a mixed reality device over a Rift or a Vive. I like the reduced hardware requirement aspect of it. I think that does make it more accessible. I don't know what LCD will be like compared to OLED. Apparently you get less of the screen door effect, um, but you also get an inferior picture quality. So, um, I, I don't know, I, I can understand why people are looking at this a little wary, uh, but there are also aspects of this that are definitely better. So I, I will be interested to hear your opinions down below. Is the new Oculus Rift more appealing to you, less appealing to you, or about the same? Let me know, comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.